In this video, I'm going to share with you the three biggest mistakes new wholesalers make and the very simple mindset shift that you can make to avoid them. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Vaina. I am a wholesaler and real estate agent here in Seattle, Washington. I got my start a few years ago. I've made over a million bucks selling and wholesaling real estate in my teens and 20s. And so today I'm giving you all the game on how you can get into this business and avoid the mistakes that I've made and that I've seen others make. So if this is at all helpful to you, please leave a like and subscribe so that I know that you like it and I can keep doing more stuff like this. But like I said, I've been wholesaling since I was 20 and it was really hard in the beginning. I really didn't know what I was doing. I actually ended up wholesaling because I had been working as a real estate agent for a while and then I met a mentor who basically convinced me to get into wholesaling because he said wholesaling was significantly easier and you can make more money and you're not tied to the two and a half or three percent commission that real estate agents traditionally make. When you're wholesaling, you're putting properties under contract and then selling them at an increased price and you can basically pick that price. Of course, that assignment fee is always determined by how much you can sell the property for, which is usually based on how much the property will be worth after it's done and after paying rehab costs. So you need to have a good grasp on how to analyze these deals you really don't need to be great at it because at the end of the day, all you can sell it for is however much your investors are willing to pay for it. But with that being said, that's my 30 seconds on what wholesaling is. So let's get into the biggest mistakes new wholesalers make. All right, so mistake number one that new wholesalers make, I see this one all the time. They don't realize that this is a sales business. I personally had a pretty smooth transition into wholesaling because I was already selling real estate as an agent. And I spent a lot of time when I was a new agent learning sales and how to talk to people and how to move them towards your service. So it was pretty natural and getting my first couple contracts signed because I already had sales experience. All I needed was the partner or the mentor who was helping me do the technicals on the wholesale deal, the contract, the process, the escrow, etc. But even for some realtors trying to transition to wholesale, this can be a struggle. Understanding sales is very, very important in wholesaling. Here's a very simple example. Let's say we have two people. We have one person who is totally inexperienced to sales. They're super new to the industry. They've never had a sales job in their life and they're trying to get into wholesaling. And then we have an experienced salesperson. They've excelled in other industries, but they're totally new to real estate and they also want to get into wholesaling. If I gave these two people the same 10 leads of motivated sellers who could turn into wholesales, which one do you think is going to close more? Out of 10, the experienced salesperson is probably going to close more leads because they know how to talk to people, how to present a service. They understand what motivates and drives people and they're able to communicate and have conversations that move towards a mutually beneficial end goal. Being a natural people person can help you a lot when breaking into sales, but if you're not a natural people person or if you're shy and introverted like I was when I started, then it's going to be very beneficial to spend a lot of time studying sales because the better you are at helping people, the more deals you will close. My personal favorite way to practice sales is researching the DISC personality type. DISC is a concept that was made up a long time ago by some random dude who basically said that there are four personality types and every single person you meet falls under one of them. Surrounded by Idiots is a really great book that goes through these personality types. This one was a struggle for me because I'm a very direct person. I'm the D on DISC and just in general, forget trying to sell to people when I talk to people who are very go with the flow or they need a lot of information to make a decision or I'm trying to get them to do something but they just take too long to do it, that was a big disconnect for me. I could not talk to these people, primarily the S and the C personality on DISC. I just couldn't stand it. I was like, can we just get to the point? But now that I understand DISC, I know that this is how these people work and if I want them to do something, I have to adapt to their personality and help them understand in the way that they understand so that they can move towards my desired outcome. And that's basically what sales is. If you can understand the other personality type and how to communicate with them so that they feel comfortable with your point, service, whatever it is, you're gonna win. So disc personality types and then a bunch of books that I have read and that I love and that have gotten me from introverted and shy and not knowing how to talk to people to closing a bunch of wholesale deals. Captivate by Vanessa Van Edwards. Great book for learning social cues and seeing what people are really saying behind their body language and what they're saying. How to win friends and influence people. This one's a classic. It's just all about how to talk to people and how to get them to do what you want and then surrounded by idiots. This one talks about the four personalities. They explain them in colors. It's very digestible and it's a really fun read because as you're reading, you're going to connect the personality types with the people you know in your life and you're gonna learn why you can't stand some people and why you connect really well with some people. So that's a really good one. But yeah, know that wholesaling is a sales business and the better you are at sales, the more effective you're gonna be at talking to sellers, closing deals, talking to buyers, talking to partners on deals. You're just gonna be more effective all around and you're gonna bridge those gaps when communicating with other people. And of course, practice your call and your appointment scripts. I always say if I started from zero, my daily schedule would include minimum one hour of role playing daily of my script. Practicing with a friend, going back and forth, acting like we're the seller, acting like we're the buyer, and talking through the objections, the appointment, 
all of it. I've got some really good live role play sessions here on the channel that I've done with other people, so check those out. Hey, it's me, Vayna. Just want to pause real quick and shout out this video's sponsor that I am very excited about. When I cold call sellers for listings and wholesale or mail out to find properties to buy, I get tons of questions on where I'm getting these owners' numbers and addresses. Now for this, I've tried a bunch of programs out there over the years, and the best one I've found is Property Radar. So I'm super psyched to partner with them to connect you with the best tools for success in real estate and prospecting. I've been using Property Radar for a few years now with tons of success, and what this software does is, like I said, it aggregates all of the property and owner data in your area, and with the click of a few buttons, you're able to filter by just about every property characteristic you can think of. From the size of house you're looking for, to zoning, to how long it's been owned and how much equity the owner has. With Property Radar, you can create the perfect property profile and pull a list of those specific homes in your desired area. Super powerful tool. I've made over $300,000 with lists created on Property Radar, so I can say with 100% certainty that compared to other platforms I've tried, Property Radar has the most accurate information, which is a big deal with sites like these. You don't want to spend money and get going prospecting just to get the wrong information. And it has the most user-friendly interface, all for the best value. I've got a link for a three-day free trial to Property Radar in the description below. Go ahead, try it out, play around with it. And if you're curious, I do have a video on my channel covering the lists I create and how I use them. So check that out. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more real estate content. And let's get back to the video. Number two mistake new wholesalers make, they think that there is a magic lead generation strategy. Now this one annoys me because I will make videos online saying, I got this $80,000 deal from a postcard. I got this $40,000 deal from a cold call. I got this $60,000 deal from a door knock. And people will still DM me and ask if cold calling really works, if door knocking really works, how many mailers should I send out? And it's fine, but it is such a mistake to assume that one or the other doesn't work at all, or that one or the other works better than the rest. There is a reason that there is no standard way of wholesaling, because different things work better for different people. So these three lead generation strategies that I mentioned are my top three favorite. However, something might work differently for you. It might be texting, it might be online ads, it might be driving for dollars, which technically falls under one of these, but I will tell you right now, every single lead generation strategy works. That's why they're out there and for people to learn. I mean, there are scams out there, but overall, something's got to give, right? What I don't recommend is jumping from strategy to strategy every single day or every single week, because if you don't give a significant amount of time and effort to one thing, nothing's really gonna work. Even then, I don't wanna say nothing's gonna work because maybe something will hit randomly and it will work, but ultimately, I think the best way to be effective in your lead generation, because this is something that you're gonna spend time doing and you wanna make sure you're maximizing the time and getting the most out of it as long as you're gonna put effort into it. What I recommend is you pick one lead gen strategy, maybe two, and you just hammer it for six months minimum, especially if you're new, spend six months cold calling. Because in the realm of cold calling alone, there's a hundred different ways to get phone numbers and addresses and all this. But like I mentioned before, if you're new to sales, this may take some time for you to get good at it. So you wanna give yourself the time to get good at cold calling. If you call three numbers, get no leads and decide that cold calling doesn't work, that is the mistake. But if you spend six months cold calling and you still suck at your script and you're not getting anything out of it, which I think is very much impossible, you have to get something out of six months of cold calling, then yeah, it doesn't work and you gotta do something else. But spend time getting good at cold calling, spend time getting good at door knocking, spend time learning what the different mailing services are and their rates and their effectiveness, and then just go for it. Because the more time you spend wondering which one works better, it's time that you could just be dedicating to one thing and getting deals. We've all fallen victim to analysis paralysis, getting stuck, trying to decide what's best to do. Because I'm a high D personality type, I'm gonna tell you, just pick one and go for it. Okay, the third biggest mistakes new wholesalers make, they give up on deals way too easily. So I see this one, every once in a while where there's a new wholesaler and they're in talks with the seller, maybe the seller's kind of shopping their offer, talking to other potential buyers, not really taking them seriously, and so they just give up. There are plenty of cases where if you came to me and you told me, Vayna, I've got this deal, here's what's going on, the seller's not motivated, you haven't gone the price low enough, this is just a waste of your time, etc., etc. That is when you give up. But there are even more cases where I would say don't. This one's also annoying. A pretty common scenario I see is that new wholesaler meets with the seller, they make them an offer, Offer, they send it to them and then they just wait. And then they get disappointed a week later when the seller signed with someone else. High producing wholesalers are extremely proactive. They follow up very frequently. They understand what the seller is kind of going through. They've gotten the information of what the seller is doing right now.
now as far as if they're talking to other people or have other offers that they know exactly where they stand and they can communicate accordingly. And beside that, a new wholesaler might decide that their numbers aren't good enough to put under contract or the seller doesn't seem motivated to them or the deal just isn't worth going after. But nine times out of 10, these are limiting beliefs. And these are stories that the wholesaler has told themselves so that they don't have to do the work, which sounds crazy because you would think you want to get deals, but ultimately we let fear take over us a lot and we think we're not good enough or the competition's going to do better or whatever. But this is where it's really important to make that mindset shift of I am here as a real estate professional to understand the seller's situation and offer my service. As long as you have followed up enough and you have good understanding and good relationship with your seller, you will know where you stand and you will know when it's time to give up. I don't give up until the seller tells me to F off. <laughs> not to say that it's my goal to bother sellers, but until they say, stop calling me, I'm not selling anymore, or I signed with someone else, I keep pursuing the deal. No matter what, if there is motivation and they're realistic on price, I want to put that deal under contract and see if I can sell it. Because ultimately, in all say mistake 3a is a lot of wholesalers will give up because the price is not exactly according to their calculation and i get the question a lot how do i do analysis of a wholesale deal how do i know this is worth calling after what formula do you use to determine your offer price and your selling price at this point in my business and the way the market is i have thrown that all out the window because honestly if you can get a realistic price out of your seller which is just in the realm of what it's worth on the market today or below it's usually a sellable deal if you have connections to buyers or you have a connection to someone with connections to buyers, wink, wink, you can work with me through the link below. You can sell most of any deals. Some wholesalers or investors or flippers will tell you that it needs to be at 70% of ARV or 80% of ARV. It's really great to be at 70 to 80% of ARV, but the reality is inventory on the market is super low. People want houses, people want deals, right? There is a national housing shortage. So if we are bringing inventory to the market, we are providing housing, someone's gonna buy it. I'm not saying every deal is sellable, but I'm saying that you shouldn't give up on deals just because pricing isn't necessarily exactly where it needs to be. Don't get too analytical on your pricing and just know that if you're somewhere realistic on your price with the seller, you can probably sell it. If this is a situation where the seller has time and they'll give you a two to three week inspection period to see if you can sell the deal, that's where you wanna just go for it and agree to their high price or whatever, as long as you're not interfering with the seller's timeline. And this is something you usually just feel out, but if the seller's not in a rush and they have time and they'll give you a two to three week inspection period to see if you can sell the deal, then yeah, agree with their high price and go for it. But if it's really a tough situation and they need to cash out in seven to 14 days, then yeah, make sure your numbers are dialed in. <laughs> That's my spiel overall. And I put a lot of thought into deciding what the three biggest mistakes I see are. Not realizing this is a sales business, thinking there's a magic pill lead generation strategy, and then giving up on deals. I think if you can get over these three and get really good at sales, get really good at your lead generation, and get really good at closing your deals, what else is there to make 100 grand in 90 days wholesale? in real estate. And like I say, very simple mindset shifts. Be proactive, work on your skills, and give this serious time and effort. It's gonna be totally worth it in the end when you start cashing those wholesale checks. But there it is. Let me know your questions in the comments down below. I love to hear from you guys and hear what problems you're going through and what I can do to help you get better at closing wholesale deals. If you're in Washington, I and my team are available to help you close your deals. The links are all down below. Everything I use for wholesaling, where I get the phone numbers, how I cold call, my script, it's all in the links down below. I've got a bunch of other videos on wholesaling, so check that out. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.